I've heard it said that welding is like sewing with fire. Well, if that's true, then today we're going to be welding with a needle and thread. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, today's fair is going to be a little bit different from usual. We're going to make a dust cover for the touch screen here on my plasma table, just to protect the screen when the machine's not in use. It's a really simple project. It's something that you can do with very basic tools and little or no sewing experience. I've actually done a fair bit of sewing. I've just never shown it on the channel. I've sewed dust covers for my surface plates. I've sewed sandbags to hold down my video gear. I even made an arm sling for my daughter when she broke her collarbone. So like I said, this is a really simple project. Let me get some dimensions off of the monitor and we'll get started. This is the material that I normally use for dust covers. And in fact, this is the material that I use to make the dust cover here on my surface plate. And what this is, is a PVC material that's uh, fabric backed. So it's a, it's, it's a fabric, in this case it's a felt that has the PVC adhered or impregnated in one side of it and it's got a little texture so it looks kind of like a, a faux leather. Um, this material I found to be very, very durable. I put all kinds of stuff on my surface plate here and uh, it doesn't just keep the dust off. I've put things on here that are leaking oil and it just sheds that stuff beautifully and just wipes clean. I've never had anything affect it. I'm sure there are things that will, but I haven't run into them. And then on the back side, this is a felt fabric, which uh, is very soft to the touch. And I like that because it, the whole point of the dust cover is to protect uh, the surface plate or whatever I'm, in this case, the monitor that I'm making the dust cover for. And the nice soft surface prevents it from scratching. And like I said, this is the material I would normally use, but when I went to buy this, another fabric caught my eye. Look at this. This is uh, this, a similar kind of a material. This one is actually fabric backed and not uh, felt backed, but it's a brown PVC faux leather with this gold diamond stitching in it. And I thought that had kind of a cool steampunky vibe. And so I thought, ah, let's have some fun. So I picked up a piece of this and this is what we're gonna use to make the dust cover. And if in the end that turns out to be a terrible fashion decision, I'm not sure I would know, but uh, if it does, then I've got the other material and these things are really quick to make. I'll just make another one. So what we're gonna do is just lay this out and I'd like the, because the aspect ratio of the monitor is wider horizontally than vertically, I wanna make sure that the diamonds are laid out so that the wider aspect of the diamond is horizontal. So I will lay it this way and we will lay out the dust cover. Now I measured the monitor and it's 19 and a quarter inches by 11 and three quarters. And I'm just kind of scratching my notes here. So it's 19 and one quarter by 11 and three quarters. And I wanna add a half an inch because I would like the dust cover, the actual front face before we put the returns on the sides, I would like it to be a half inch larger than the monitor itself just to make sure it fits comfortably over it. And then the returns around the side will have hems and they should kind of grip on and hold it. And my experience says that that's probably gonna be about right, which means that the front face of this thing needs to be 19 and three quarters by 12 and a quarter. And let me take my tape measure over to the monitor and just do a quick sanity check and make sure that that will work. Yep, that checks out. So uh, then on the sides, I'm gonna want about uh, an inch and a half return plus a half inch hem. So all the way around the outside, we need to add an additional two inches. So we just need to make sure that I know where this fabric ends and that I've got an extra two inches. I'm just looking at where the embroidery ends. We'll use that as the edge. Make sure I've got two inches up from that and then we'll start laying this out. And I actually have some, you know, sewing tools, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these, but there's no reason you couldn't just do this with a carpenter square. And to mark this, I'm just gonna use a Sharpie. There's no reason not to. Okay, 
and make nice clean lines that are very easy to see. Okay, so that's my, that's my base line. I'm gonna come up and lay out for the hem. So the hem is, it's a half inch hem, so I'll mark a line at an inch so that I can see where I need to fold it over. And then another inch beyond that will then give me my baseline that will be two inches from the edge of the fabric, cut out, and it'll be an inch and a half from the side seam. You'll see when we actually put this together, okay? So then let's go ahead and mark it out in this direction. It's 23 and three quarters, so I will just make a mark here on the end. In two inches in here. And then we need the width of that front panel, 23 and three, which is 19 and three quarters. And then we need to go another two inches beyond that. And then I have a big square that I'm gonna to use to go ahead and mark these lines up the side. And again, you could do this with a carpenter square. There's no, no need to no need to be fancy, but if you've got the tools, might as well use them. Okay, and that's all there is to laying this out. We've got the panel in the center, and then we've got two inches all the way around. I'll be making a half inch hem. So when I fold over this last inch becomes a half inch, which means I'll have an inch and a half return. I think that's it, I just need to cut it out now. And that's the panel ready to sew. We've got our marks for where this thing's gonna fold. So these sides are gonna come up and this will be, you know, tucked and seamed, and we'll get a nice seam in the corner. This should be really simple. Let me grab the sewing machine. You could do this by hand, but I'm gonna use a machine because I've got one. Now, the only sewing we really need to do is just to pleat these corners so that we'll end up with the, the two sides uh, down and get a nice, neat seam in the corner. And we'll do this inside out, and you can, do this in a bunch of ways, but the easiest way, you note I haven't even cut this material out of the corner yet. The easiest way is just to fold it on the diagonal and bring the edges down together and then just sew along this line and then we'll cut the corner material out. And it's a lot harder to describe than it is to actually do, so let's just do it. I've got two real challenges in doing this. The first is that I'm wearing boots and operating a sewing machine pedal in boots is difficult. The second is that the uh, LED lighting underneath this is the wrong color temperature, so the video is gonna look weird. But you can see I've just got the fabric folded over at the diagonal and I've aligned these corners. Now I could put pins in it. If you do put pins in it, remember this is a, a vinyl faux leather and so if you put the pins on the side that you're gonna keep, the holes will be visible. So you would want to definitely do it on the side that's waist. Drop the foot here. And just so, and even though this material is fairly thick, there should be no drama here at all. Back stitch a little bit to secure it and then That's it. So we've secured that corner, and if we turn that inside out, we have a nice, neat little corner sewn on the, uh, on the dust cover. And then we can take our scissors, remove the excess material. Let's see if I can figure out where I put them. So the seam's right there. We'll just cut a oh, quarter inch beyond the seam. And that gives us a nice neat corner inside and out. Let me just do the other four corners exactly, or the other three corners, 
exactly the same way. Make sure you turn it inside out though. Don't sew it right side out or you'll get a really weird looking corner. There you can see the carcass of the uh, dust cover. We've got the corners all stitched and I've trimmed the excess fabric out. So once you turn these, you can see they end up being a really nice, neat little corner. I should probably take out the extra thread. And uh, when you turn that inside out, you get a nice, neat little corner. The last thing we need to do is hem the sides. And to hem these, Instead of sewing, I'm going to use hot glue. And I've done this on a bunch of these. It holds really well. It goes right down into the fabric and it holds. And all we're doing is we're making a half inch hem. So I've got this last inch marked here on the side and we'll just fold it over a bead of glue. And it does a couple of things. One, you don't get additional holes poked into the fabric. You don't have to match thread colors. And when you come around these corners on the hem, you end up with uh, as many as, let's see, one, two, three. you can end up with four layers of fabric in places on a big heavy seam. And depending how you're sewing this, uh, a sewing machine may or may not handle this well. So the hot glue is really nice. The other thing about the hot glue is it adds a little bit of mass and stiffness to the corner. So you get a little bit more rigidity in that hem. So this is just a cheap, you know, department store uh, hot glue gun. I paid maybe $7 for many, many, many years ago. And I'm just using these multi-temp uh, glue sticks. I do find this really hilarious uh, that it says non-yellowing, yet they are very clearly yellow. I've probably had these for 10 years hanging on the shelf. So let's just get started. And again, all we've got to do, I'll just start here a little bit in the middle. Let's just run a little bead of glue and then fold the fabric over and press it down. Let the glue cool. And I have a one, two, three block here I was gonna to use to crush it. Looks like that may not even be necessary. Though it is hot and a one, two, three block doesn't burn like fingers do. on the monitor. Well, let's try the dust cover on the monitor. Now, I will confess I actually already tested this and it was a little bit loose. The way the thing fit on here, the sides were kind of flopping out and didn't stay on particularly well, so I made one small modification. Here in the corners where it folded over, I know this is going to be very difficult to see, but I just added a couple of stitches. So I folded it over flat and then just added a couple of stitches in the corner to make it pucker and hold it square and to tighten it up. Now I added an extra half inch. If I had added less, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe not added anything given the flexibility of the fabric, it probably would have been a better fit, but it was a little bit large. And instead of remaking it, I just went ahead and again, on all the corners, just folded it over and put a little stitch to kind of tuck it just to see if I could make it fit. And you know, if I don't like the look, I can always just make another one, but that allows me to just hook it over. You can see it kind of tucks and holds neatly in the corners and it goes around the four corners of the monitor and it's nice and solid. It's not gonna fall off yet. It's real easy. This is what I was thinking I was gonna get because of the hem on the sides and the stiffness and the bulk in the corner. I was expecting to get, you know, it to hang up a little bit on the side of the monitor 
to hold it in place, but with that extra half inch, it was apparently a little bit too big. So saved it with some little uh, tacks in the corner. I did this with a sewing machine, but you could easily do this with a needle and thread or just make it a little bit smaller so it fits nicer. So I'm still trying to decide, do I like this fabric? And I think, I think I do. I'll leave it and live with it for a while. And if it annoys me, I'll make another one out of black, but I kind of like the look. Tell me down in the comments, what do you think? Should I leave it like this or should I make a black one? Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I will probably take some time and make some dust covers for some other things around the shop that need them. But for now, I think we're nearly done with the plasma table. I just need to route some wiring and think about paint. If, if you wanna see that, if you wanna see uh, what I'm doing with the wiring, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do it off camera. There's no point in uh, watching you watch me route wires. But if that's something you're interested in, let me know. That's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.